Who is Rachel Plakin? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of You Can't Make This Shit Up. Uh, we are so happy to have uh, Representative uh, Rachel Plakin with us today, and I just really want to get an opportunity for her to introduce herself. Thank you, uh, Representative, for being with us. Thank you so much, Joel. It's great to be here. Do you want me to introduce myself now? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I am a second-year elected state representative in Florida, District 36, which covers North Seminole County, Lake Mary, Sanford, Geneva, North Winter Springs, and Northern Longwood. Um, I've passed seven bills so far in the Florida House with an emphasis on women and girls, helping keeping them safe, celebrating who they are, and also the opioid crisis um, and illegal and the effects um, and the intertwining of illegal immigration with that. Um, I, the governor just signed a bill that I sponsored about prosecuting people that have never had a driver's license that are coming mm -hmm. to our state. And he said, this is going to be a great deterrent. So we've been working hand in hand. Also, he signed um, Revive Awareness Day to help bring people. This bill will help bring people um, awareness all throughout the state about the life saving medications that can revive someone after an opioid overdose. So these are the kind of bills that are my passion, and I'm just so glad to be here on your show today. Well, we're glad to have you. And thank you. As a matter of fact, I'd like to say one of the most uh, successful legislators this year, a lot of stuff died in the Senate, but you got a lot accomplished, and I, I'm glad that you had a chance to uh, bring that up. Thank um, you. Which, which bill do you think uh, really impacts you the most? It makes you... Uh, say, look, another great year in the legislator for me. You know, I, I really like them all. One in particular that really got to my heart was one that helps the state um, incur it, it requires that sexual assault kits be retained for 50 years because the current law was saying that if someone, a victim, did not press charges right away, their sexual assault kit could get thrown away by local law enforcement wow. or by a rape crisis center. So this law said, we're gonna keep these for 50 years. Now, a lot of the rape charges, the statute is only like, you know, seven years. So it's a lot less than that. However, for 50 years, if we keep them, then those kits can be used to help solve other crimes. So this is going to be revolutionary in the way that the state handles evidence and, you know, who knows what crimes could be solved yeah. years and years from now that maybe the victim just didn't have the courage yet to come forward. So this is going to be really important for them. David? I'm going to defer to our political director, Angelina, because of your uh, experience and also the legislation that addressing women's issues. So I'm going to hand it off to Angelina, if you have a question for the representative. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Representative, just for being here. It is such an honor just to talk with you, especially as someone so young in my career. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so one of my questions for you is, what is your advice for young conservatives looking to make a difference in the political field? Well, first of all, you're not going to get anywhere if you just sit at home, right? So you got to get out there. you got to network. Um, I really got connected in the political arena in Central Florida when I got into the real estate business. And so 
one of my business models that I started to follow was talk to 10 or 20 people a day about real estate. And I didn't really like doing the cold calling. So I started going to events, right? And then I, my passion's always been politics. So I ended up at all these political events, like talking to people and shaking hands and just getting to know people in the room. And I would say, go to the influencers, right? The people who are elected, yeah. tell them your name, tell them your name again and again. Go up, I, that's what I did. I went up, I would go up there and shake my, shake their hand and say like, Hey mayor, it's good to see you again. You know, just as a reminder at the time, my name is Rachel Saunders. No, it's Rachel Flanken, but I would remind him right <laughs> now like what I do and then say, you know, I really appreciate A, B, and C that you did. And, you know, just that's a good way to get to know people. So I would say that first and foremost, and then also read a lot of books. Um, I, my staff that I have and um, our intern, I try to encourage them to read, listen to audiobooks. And mm -hmm. I really also think that all of the wisdom in the world pretty much is on YouTube. So if you don't want to read or you listen to audiobooks, just play some YouTube mm -hmm. wisdom and, you know, learn something. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That is and, awesome. And that I still ahead. do. I think I think personal growth and development is important at every single age. You know, I'm 44, and I still think about like, how can I get better this year? How what can I learn this year? You know, what books can I read and listen to to make me a more intelligent person? So I think all that's important. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, my final question is, you know, how do you balance um, your career with your personal life? That's a really good question because it's really hard sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'm actually coming to you from my home. This is our formal area. This is my grandmother's couch and my grandmother's oh. painting. So we have more of a modern area where I usually do these kind of zooms and shows. Uh, but my husband was in there. He had he just bought a printing press, so he works from home. We do have Gracie, who's almost two. He literally took the pr like part of the printing press and put it in our living room this morning because I was a panelist. Uh, and the winter park at tax watch and then i went to a groundbreaking in longwood so he's watching the baby in the living room with our printing press and he's doing that i came home about 11 o'clock after he had been watching her for several hours and then i made her some scrambled eggs and i uh, heated up some leftovers from yesterday some chicken and rice and then i put her to bed just as I was running around and trying to powder my face and get ready for this show. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit of a balancing act sometimes, but you just do your best, you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, I would say like, don't, if you're a mom and stuff, like don't ever feel guilty about anything because every mom I really think is trying to do their very best. Like I would say like 99% of moms who are like not criminals are doing their very best in everything they can do. And it's really hard to be a mom, but God bless every mom, because now that I am one, I see how hard it can be, but they're amazing. You know, I, they make the world go around. Well, Absolutely. Angelina is not going to realize this about you, but I happen to. So she's always talks about her religion. So I want you to talk about your faith and how that helps you as a legislator to go up there and, and face the, the challenges that you have. I, I remember last uh, si uh, last session, you had to have security because of mm. uh, a bill that you had. So now talk about your faith. I, I just the, let our audience know a little bit about that. Thank you, Joel, I appreciate that opportunity. I, I grew up in the church. Uh, I grew up going like three times a week to church, mm. but then I didn't, I knew God kind of, but I really felt like I really dedicated my life to him when I was in college because I ended up at a Christian college that I really kind of wanted to go to actually after visiting there in high school. And so it was called Or Roberts University out in Oklahoma. Yeah. And one of the first few weeks there, I heard this girl talking about actually falling in love with God and having this, you know, intimate relationship. And, and so I started talking to God a lot and so through the years, I feel like my faith is wrong. I've read the Bible twice. I continue to read the Bible daily. And I think character is one of the most important things that we can have as elected officials. Um, and, and I've used my faith in Tallahassee, trying to do the best I can every day and making wise decisions um, on a daily basis, really just about every day that you're in session. You're faced with opportunities to compromise your faith. You're faced with pressures and sometimes pressures from people 
who can do something for you if you just like kind of compromise a little here mm-hmm. on your principles or t- give a little here and you got to figure out what's important to you and where the areas are that you will not compromise right mm-hmm. so there's bills like i would never compromise my faith like abortion there's other bills where you know it it's not life and death you know like credit unions versus banks like either way you go we're all probably going to be okay on that one Mm -hmm. so there's there's just you need to figure out what your principles are and don't ever sway from them because when you are done with your office you want to go home and be able to look in the mirror and go back to your family and like what you see representative representative you talked about balance in your life um to kind of bring that to the state legislature um it wasn't the this past session wasn't as robust as previous sessions as far as you know legislation that came out of uh the legislature for the governor to review and sign. Is there something that you wish that the legislature addressed and moved forward for the governor to sign or or in his decision to veto? Yeah, I had a water bill, a clean water bill that was really important to me. Um, Seminole County had been faced with 1,4 dioxane contaminants and Mm. it has since been cleaned up, especially in the Lake Mirror area. But, you know, where else has this been found in Florida? I wanted to know that, you know, I wanted to do a group workshop. I wanted to pass a bill to prevent this from ever happening again. And so unfortunately my bill didn't get heard, but I'm gonna continue to work on this and hopefully by next session, have a product that will get heard and pass. Because I think one of the most important responsibilities of government is to keep us safe. And Mm -hmm. a big part of that is clean water. Agreed, agreed. Joel? I'm trying to make sure I don't mute myself again. No, <laughs> I, I, I'm honestly, like, now I want to kind of shift uh, shift gears because uh, when you're elected, you're term limited out, and it, you have to try to get as much accomplished as you possibly can. Yeah. So I kind of want to go uh, a little bit politics right now. You know, you have a challenging race. The minute you get elected, you're basically running again. Talk about the the pressure of fundraising, the, the, the and, and what your target is. Talking to me, your constituent. Talk, talk to me about your election itself. Well, I've been fundraising since last year, and that's pretty much what you do if you run for two years on the campaign. I mean. You want to start out your first year pretty much fundraising and then toward as we get closer to the election date then you start walking doors and so we're probably going to start walking doors here in the next few weeks and gear up for that we're getting literature together right now and yes i've been making calls i've been calling just about everybody i know that i think might be able to contribute and help me out and um you just got to have the courage and you believe in your principles, and they're they're not giving me the money. They're investing in the state of Florida, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's a very good point. And and if if somebody were to want to volunteer, if somebody were to want to uh, donate to your campaign, yeah, uh, how you know you're people don't realize how accessible you guys are. I mean, I go to events and I they see are. the same people over and over again and yes. I go, how uh, many other people, if we just invited one person, just like church, if we just invited one person mm-hmm. and, and to come to an event and hear you speak, you know, that's it's huge. But talk to me about how we can get involved to your campaign if we, if we have somebody watching that wants to be involved. Well, that's great that you said that because we're actually looking for volunteers and campaign workers right now. And we need some folks uh, in the next few weeks to help us walk doors and get petitions signed. So they can send an email to Rachel at rachelplakin.com. So that's R-A-C-H-E-L at R-A-C-H-E-L-P-L-A-K-O-N.com. Awesome. Well, we're going to make sure we're going to make sure that we have that posted uh, uh, somewhere on the video. But uh, yeah. I it's really important because people don't realize we're about local politics and you what you guys just did in in session is the most important thing to us so we really appreciate you coming here uh 
I don't know, David, if you have anything else, but I do want to, you know, to know about Rachel. Let, let people know who you are, what you've done. I mean, we talked about a little bit about real estate, but you have a robust, you know, story. So can you share a little bit with our audience? Sure, about my life story or? Yeah, something about yeah, so, you. Yep, so I, like I said, I went to Christian College and then I came back. I actually worked for Jeb Bush back in 2001. Okay. And I was a community liaison for his mentoring initiative. And then within a year or two, I ended up in Nashville, Tennessee. I also sing, so I went up wow. there to pursue music as a Christian country singer. And wow. I did that for a number of years. I toured to Asia. I toured up the East Coast. I sang at Times Square. I sang at some historic places in Nashville and Malaysia, Indonesia. And so I had some great adventures. And then in 2013, I decided that I kind of wanted to be in one place in Florida. I had a lot of family here. I wanted to watch my nephews grow up. And uh, the rest is history. You know, I, 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 well, while I was in Nashville, though, I, that's when I first got involved in real estate. And I'm so glad I did because there's not a lot of money in music. You know, you can kind of starve. <laughs> that's where the term starving artist comes in. So the real estate kind of helped me fund everything. And God really provided um, as I, because I felt like I had a ministry, you know, it was, that was more of it to me than really trying to be a star. I was doing it more to help folks, encourage women and, and, and you know, just to help people, bring people to Christ. And so now I am, just trying to be a shining light in the realm of politics and it's great because i've i started getting involved in the college republicans back in at or roberts so mm -hmm. just feel like i've come full circle well awesome i i, I want to before david asks a question I, tell mm -hmm. us what your district looks like i know that's probably the hardest question but you go you say it all the time so kind of describe what that district looks like so i can find out if i'm in your district <laughs> well, it's Sanford, Lake Mary, all the way out to Geneva, North Winter Springs, and Northern Longwood. And it's actually a slight Democrat district. So it's about a, like a plus three Democrat district. Um, I am a Republican, and I believe we have also about a third non-party affiliated NPAs, mm -hmm. which are also known as the independents. So the end. Of, I really believe the independents are going to go my way. I think we have common sense policy. Um, I am a fiscal conservative, and I am able to get things done. You know, I've brought back millions and millions of dollars to Seminole County, and we're just getting started. Nice, awesome. David. That is nice. And uh, I do. Since you did open the door about your aspiring musical career, I do have a got you question. However, before I get to that, I'm going to defer again to Angelina, uh, just from the perspective, and I, I, I kind of gave Angelina a heads up to get ready to ask a question. <laughs> but you know, as, 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 um, as the political director of Jay and Washington, and uh, our emphasis on youth, the, the younger generation in our firm as political innovators, I, I, I want to highlight uh, uh, our political director, Angelina, and some of the views and, 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 um, and, and comments that you know, she represents. So Angelina, what, what do you have? And, and then we'll get to my question. Okay, perfect. I really appreciate it, David. So yeah. I feel like for a lot of us young Christians, especially, I feel like the one thing that's holding us back is fear, right? And I know that Joel, he mentioned the fact that you needed security for one of your bills. And I just, I wanted to ask you, how did you go about that? Because I think that for me, you know, I'm very ambitious, but I'm ambitious to a point of where I don't want to lay my life down on the line. So how do you, how do you balance that? Good question. Well, I think when you know you're doing the right thing, you just kind of leave the rest of it in God's hands, you know? Wow. So yeah. I wasn't really too afraid, but I was smart about it. So I just made sure somebody was with me and I wasn't walking those halls in Tallahassee alone. <laughs> That's awesome. So my got you question is this. Okay. Do you mind maybe singing a couple of lines from your favorite country song? Oh boy! <laughs> 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 or, <laughs> or uh, you know, maybe a, a verse from your favorite hymn or, sure. or, or 
How about a little God Bless America? You ready? Nice. There you go. Right. Beautiful. God bless America, land that I love. All right, that's all you get into that. All we need is what we need. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Representative Flake. And that that was awesome. That is very cool. <laughs> I've been like singing the national anthem a time or two at little events around the community. So oh. you got to catch me though, because I don't like you know I don't tell everybody I'm going to do it. I just kind of do it quietly and then like, go sit down. You know. Okay, now we're going to be on the lookout. Now we'll we'll, we'll be stalking you. <laughs> but, but again, this is a this is a pleasure, and and when it gives me the passion to do what I do. Uh, and to bring this, to, you know, to bring this to people because this is what energizes me is 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 the yeah. politicians that I get to work with up here in Seminole County uh, are, are so accessible. And again, thank you so much yes. for for being here. And you know, if we can ever get in touch with you, um, if your constituents need to get in touch with you, uh, you mentioned that you have a, an aide run us through uh, how we can contact your office if we have a problem. Well, probably the easiest thing, just email that email I gave you earlier, rachel at rachelplakin.com, and, uh, and I can get you where you need to go. Just tell me what you're looking for. Oh, that's fantastic. And look, I, I appreciate it. Does anybody else? Look, we got to like, we got to share, you know, share yes. this information because this representative is representing you she's representing us and, and it's important that we look at that we've got to vote it's very important that we vote she's got a tough race it's a plus three democrat independence she's gotten the most legislation done this year so i'm, I'm pitching for you i'm hoping that we have a great session uh next session with you in the lead Thank you. I really appreciate it. We appreciate you. you, Representative. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you.